So anyway, good afternoon. Um, started doing this on Facebook Live and it really didn't go well. My friend Jennifer in the States told me I was sideways on, so I thought I'd better start again, do this in a slightly different way. One of Jen's friends is a lady called Amy Bayonet, and she asked me the other day to tell the story about what I was doing in London in 2012. Now, I could mention the O word, but I won't. Um, when we worked on this specific global sports event back in 2012 in a little town in southern England, um, one of the key things that you had when you were contracted these guys was the fact that you couldn't even mention what you were doing. And there you were, doing one of the biggest things of all time you'd ever done, and you couldn't talk about it. So let's just be careful with words and just say that there was a load of sports things happening around town, and we got involved with them. And one of the projects was um, really fascinating because it was um, uh, it involved flooring of a different type. And um, I'm going to come on and tell you about how I really what happened to me in that year because it was all about what we're doing right now. But the forerunner to that was, um, well, it came for many years actually because in 2005, I think July 2005, they announced that um, this sports event was going to happen. And from that moment on, being in that industry and working in that line of work, I knew, I absolutely knew I'd be involved in it, and I didn't know how. But um, And it's always fun and interesting about how these stories unfold, because actually, I guess that throughout that next seven years, um, I worked for about three different companies, and then for myself, and all doing different things, but they were all there at the end, because it's just such a huge thing. So if anybody knows like the Glastonbury Festival, it's massive, huge, huge event, big venue, 20,000 people working to make Glastonbury happen. But this sports event, with the O word in it, is, is like running 25 of them at the same time. So it's just a monumental piece of work that you get involved with. So I started looking at stuff probably 2006, six seven. started talking and engaging with people. But it got serious about 2009-10, when I was working in um, uh, with a business that were very... Um, at an interesting proposition, and I'll show you it. It's a level elevated deck that you would um, that you could lift off the ground, uh, but more importantly, what it could do is it could take something like that and get it like that. So what we were looking at was um, uh, the uh, an equestrian venue where they had to do horse jumping, show jumping, and dressage, and you can't do that on a hill. You have to do it on the flat level. And the thing was, the venue they picked for this was Greenwich Park. And it was a dirty great hill. So how do you sort that out? Well, I'm just about to go and show you that now. Storm Doris coming through today. You can see the lights going off and on. So if that goes wrong, uh, I might go a bit dark, but seeing as I'm on the phone, I'll still be able to talk to you. Um, so I got involved in that, and it was really interesting. And we put this steel deck up, and it was about 100,000 square feet for you in America, 10,000 meters for us here, which equates to um, either Wembley Stadium or the New York Stan Yankee Stadium in terms of area, if, if that's the uh, venues of interest to you guys. Um, but the point about it is, at one end, up the top of the hill, it was like about two feet or half a metre off the ground. At the other end, it was 4.2 metres up in the air, or about 12, 15 feet. And um, on top of that, we stuck 2,000 tonnes of sand. And on top of that, we made the horses jump. And that was all done in a royal park. So the, I guess the interesting thing about that is if you go to that park now, you'd never know it has existed. And this is the big thing about this, this, this big event was they wanted to do things in a sustainable fashion where you could take a piece of ground, use it for something else, and then return it to um, how, 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 that, how it originally was. And what we're talking about here is the, is the park that King Henry VIII used to go hunting in. So it's a big, iconic piece of London. And if you walked into Greenwich Park now, you'd never know that thing had ever happened. I mean, it's a bit um, disruptive at the time, but it worked. One of the really key bits about that was Temporary Road, because how do you get... Uh, the cranes, the trucks, the axis in to build this deck, which weighed about, I don't know, several thousand tons. Um, so we had to get access systems into there, did trial events, did the real thing and finally got there and did it. So anyway, back into 2011, I, I decided I wasn't going to do that anymore uh, and decided I was going to go off and learn to do something else, which is the internet. And I sort of had this idea in the back of my head that 
I've been doing event infrastructure and temporary flooring for 15, 20 years. And to be honest, I sort of had enough of living out of the bag. And I thought, you know what, I'm going to go and learn to do this new thing. And as is the case when you quite often do that sort of thing, as soon as you do and you decide you're not going to do it, everybody starts picking up the phone and ringing you up. And I guess in 2012, that wasn't a, a, a hugely surprising idea because, you know, there I am with, I don't know, 15, 20 years of experience in temporary floor and event infrastructure and temporary event infrastructure. And here you have the biggest event in the world happening and um, I'm hanging around, not doing much. So I get this phone call off a mate of mine. Um, there I am happily sitting in my office doing publishing books and writing stuff and blogging and all that kind of stuff. And a mate of mine called Jeff rings me up and says, JD, there's a bit of a problem. So what's the problem, Jeff? And it was to do with, um, you know, you've got to get an idea of the scale of this, this, this event, how huge it was. I mean, if you think if people over here would know Glastonbury Festival, and you know, you imagine these big music festivals. It's like, it's like running 25 of them at the same time. So there's enormous amounts of process that goes into this and lots of things from construction companies that run it, working in conjunction with event companies, which is an interesting fit, but it does happen and it sort of works. Um, but they... You know, it's a huge organisation and it's not agile. So it's a bit like ch turning a, 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 an oil tanker. And I suppose at the top end of this is the government and the government never likes spending money. So their decision making process is like, oh, we don't really want to spend this money. Oh, but we got to and then eventually they'll press the button and do it. And this happened um, in terms of one of the big bits of the, uh, uh, the jigsaw was and part of the sustainability piece was what they didn't want to happen was lots of people driving to all these venues and parking because obviously lots of cars carbon dioxide you know poisoning the atmosphere environmental disruption all that kind of stuff so what they elected to do was create buses and park and ride solutions so everybody could arrive in these big buses get parked at the external venues so we had like lee valley where they did the white water we had brands hatch where they were doing cycling we had Eaton Dorney where they did the Rome, where my mate did all the build on the grandstands and stuff. And these venues are huge, you know, 20,000, 30,000 seat of stadiums built out of nothing. And, um, but they needed the road to get in, otherwise they couldn't get the buses there. And we got a call, uh, uh, Jeff got a call and rang me up. He said, look, we need to find 35, sorry, get that right, 55,000 metres of trackway we needed to find to get these buses on the ground in these eight or nine different venues. And, um, what Jeff knew is I knew my stuff and I knew my bacon, I know where this stuff is. So he said, can you have a look and go and find it? And um, I did. I went and found it. I spent two days down with Jeff and just said to my wife, I said, look, I'm going to go down and work with this guy for a couple of days. She said, are you getting paid? I said, no. Always a good argument. Um, and lo and behold, did the work, submitted it, and then some company came in and usurped us and, um, I don't know, did a competitive bid and we didn't win it. So this is about March. So anyway, there I am again, two months later, sitting my sitting in my office, minding my own business. And Jeff rings up again. He says, you never guess what? He said, it's come back again. They need this 55,000 metres and whatever. I don't know why it happened. Something hadn't worked out right for them. So I said, Jeff, do you realise, at this point, I think we're seven weeks away from the game starting. In an average summer in Great Britain, Britain finding 55,000 metres or five times the area of Wembley Stadium of... of, of of a trackway at that time of year is like, you know, I don't know, it's rare. It's rare. Rocking horse, what's the phrase? I can't think of it anyway, but like a really, really difficult thing to do. So anyway, I set off again and started looking into it and bringing a few people up. And I went from, well, from England out to as far as Bratislava and Poland looking for kit. And I worked out, well, it worked out, I could find this time 35,000 metres of kit by going all, all over Europe and picking up my little black book and um, ring, ringing and writing all the contacts I got. And I said, went back to Jeff and said, look, I've got it. And he said, well, it's not enough because we need this 55,000. So then we start putting our thinking caps on and getting imaginative because some of these events weren't running at the same time. So we thought, well, can we move one bit of the kit to another spot? And we had a couple of critical places. One was Lee Valley, which had to be completed by 10.30, absolutely, on the night of the opening ceremony of this um, small global sporting event in a village somewhere in South England. And um, what we worked out is the next one, one of the other venues a little bit later on was Eaton Dorney, which was to do with rowing. And we worked out we could install at Lee Valley 2,500 panels, so about 10,000 square metres of row. I'll show you the pictures. You'll be seeing pictures as this goes along. Well up in the air, as we are now. Um, it's good to have a toy, just to give you an idea of uh, 
how high up in the air we are. And um, it will be the best, but it will give you a little bit of an idea of um, what we've accomplished here so far. Um, entrance to the park over there where the BMW's coming in and uh, the road comes around. 2,000 odd panels, uh, the last 150 to go in tonight. I'm getting too close to those uh, pylons. And here's the access platform for where the uh, buses stop and the people get off. And you can see another couple of buses over the other end there. Um, bit of a nice aerial view. And behind us is the venue. Where it's all starting to happen. Well, I don't know what time we are now. We're about three hours off the, um, the very start of uh, uh, 12 minutes past eight tonight um, over in another part of southern England. And then we can pick it up and move it across from one side of London to the other and put it down in the next spot just in time for the rowing at Eton Dorney. And that's what we did. And it was incredible. It was like this wonderful event. And do you know what? I guess we're, our, our 55,000 metres of kit was probably 10% of the trackway that got used on that event. We're talking about, if you think about grandstand seating and to build the grandstand seats, to build all the villages that they put in there, you've got to have access, you've got to have roads. So there's temporary roads to get trucks in, there's put walkways to get people safely around the place. There is tons of stuff. And what are you doing? You know, what, what are we doing? The problem we're solving in doing that, uh, or the the organisational people are, are solving in doing that, is they are taking these pieces of ground, these venues that are historic, iconic locations within cities uh, 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 around the world, and they are transforming these environments into these massive public events. And then a month or so later, they're unable to bring them back to life in their core aspects of what they do, whether it's a park or a monument or you know, a, a famous street or area in, in, in the city they do. It's completely transformed the way that I events can be staged. But if you didn't have, you know, if you didn't have these solutions, these light, medium and heavy solution systems, you'd rip the ground up before you start. You'd destroy everything before you got there. The reparation bills would be enormous. Um, and, you know, this is what counts, is making the right choices in the right places to get the right equipment in. And they didn't always get it right. They didn't get, always get it right. And part of our mandate was doing like parachuting into venues where they'd made a mess of it and not got the appropriate systems or, 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 or not made the right choices in the level of system uh, that they put into these places. And I'm not going to, you know, dwell on that too much because, quite frankly, if they ask for the wrong kit and put it in the wrong place, it ain't going to work. So it's not the manufacturer's fault. It's not the people who are delivering it's fault. It's the people who were probably trying to save money when, you know, I suppose when you spend the best part of eight or nine billion on staging something, you try and scrimp a bit back towards the end. But look, it was a fantastic thing to work in. It really, really was. And it gave me such a great sense of this whole range and variety of equipment that, that I'm used to working with. And then you get to these major scale events and, and there you are. You can just make this world come to life by putting a little bit of flooring on the ground, whether it's plastic or whether it's metal. And the silly thing about it, you can do it in your house too. You know, it, it, look, if that's one end of the, the scale and, and one end of the equation, the other end of the scale and the other end of the equation is almost individuals or very small scale events like village fates or stuff, you can transform them too. You know, you can make them into more um, inviting environments whilst protecting the environment, the city underneath it, um, the, the ground surface. And allowing people to do other things on those surfaces as soon as you've finished and gone. Because there's nothing going to happen. It's not going to go wrong. So that's good. So, yeah, look, Olympics, what an event. What a wonderful thing to be a part of and to be involved in. And um, um, uh, I just wanted to sort of convey this over to you because I think the sense of scale and the ability of what this kit can do, not everybody knows it. So why not tell the truth and tell people about it? Anyway, I'm, I've run on 12 minutes. I hope you like it. And um, I hope this video makes some sense. Thanks for watching.